do not read this book when you were eating. It is some very graphic medical stuff happens in this book. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tara East. I'm a writer, blogger, YouTuber and the author of the mystery novel Every Time He Dies. And in this week's video, I'm going to be covering the 12 books that I read during January. Now for the month of January, I predominantly read middle grade and YA books with the exception of one adult text. Now the reason why I read only children's books during the month of January is because I am teaching a children's book course. And while I am familiar with a number of children's books, I wanted to get a sense of the more contemporary texts that are coming out right now. So in this video, I'll give a quick blurb of each book that I read, my sort of thoughts on it, and then at the end, I'll talk about the lessons I learned from an entire month of reading children's books. So the first book I read was Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo, which is the second book in the Six of Crows series. I listened to this book on audio, and I probably won't give too much of a summary because I think most people are super familiar with this series. But basically it is a heist novel that includes six characters and i was very surprised when i listened to this book that it alternated between all of the six characters so the six point of views which is quite unusual for ya books usually we will have one protagonist who uh, we are closely identifying with and we're following their story and we're seeing the world through their perspective whether that's in a first person point of view or you're using third person limited so I was surprised that we were moving through all these different POVs, but that being said, very obviously, baby gangster Kaz Brecker is clearly the protagonist of this story. But the reason why we couldn't be in his POV all the time is because sometimes Kaz is keeping secrets. And if we knew about those secrets, then the entire plot would be revealed and there would be very little tension. But I rather enjoyed this series and the only thing I have to say is on audiobook, at different times, I wasn't sure if I had missed something or if something had been concealed from me as the reader. Because this is a heist novel, it is very plotty and there's a lot of moving parts. So it'd be interesting to see how the reading experience would be different in print versus audio. Though I do have to say the audio narration is fantastic. The second book I read during the month of January was House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. So this is actually probably my favorite book for the entire month. I had heard so much hype about this book since it came out in 2021. It definitely lived up to the expectation, or lived up to my expectations and it suited my personal taste. So in a nutshell, the book is about three sisters who go missing for a month on New Year's Eve. And then they return and when they come back their black hair is now blonde and their blue eyes are now black and they've got a small scar at the base of their throat. As the novel continues the eldest sister goes missing and the two younger sisters have to find out what happened to her where she went and as they do they discover what happened to them during that month that they disappeared. Now this book is very atmospheric, very image heavy and very moody. Like you could describe this book just using single words like smoke, earth, decay, rot, um, flowers. It is very spooky and creepy. I actually think it wouldn't have taken much at all to bump this up and make it an adult novel. Even though it's technically a YA novel, I think if you are interested in spooky, horror, creepy novels, I think you would really like it. It's definitely got some scenes in it that I will never forget that were very graphic, um, but I really enjoyed it. And bonus is the fact that she is an Australian writer and it's always exciting to see Australian writers do well. Oh, and I should also say the writing on the sentence level is beautiful. Next up, we've got The War That Saved My Life. So this is a middle grade novel and it's set during World War II. Now I actually just listened to this podcast called The Pop Podcast and they were making a joke that there's that many books set during World War II that you would think the war had gone for like 80 years. Anyway, I'm also not a big World War II 
reader and I particularly like reading books set during that time period but I did really enjoy this book. So this book follows Ada. She is a young girl with a club foot and basically what happens in this novel is World War II is breaking out and all of the children are taken out of London and they are fostered in homes in the country. And throughout the course of the book Ada learns how to ride horses, she makes her first friend ever and she starts to really develop a sense of identity and a sense of self beyond her physical body. And my favourite thing about this book is that Ada's clubbed foot is never fixed. Instead, her identity is transformed, she is transformed, because her identity is no longer attached to her physical body. And instead, she learns confidence and skills that she just didn't have prior to leaving her abusive home and going into this foster system. So it was a really positive book and I definitely recommend it if you like middle grade fiction or if you are looking for a good middle grade read for your children. So the fourth book I read during January was The Nothing Man by Catherine Ryan Howard. So this book is not a children's book. But the reason why I read it during January is because I put a hold on it at my library back in November and it became available in January and there was no way I wasn't going to read it. So I listened to The Nothing Man on audio and it was absolutely exceptional. So The Nothing Man has a two-part structure to it. So one part of the book is a true crime memoir that is written from the perspective of a survivor of a serial killer. Um, she is the sole survivor and she witnessed a crime when she was a child and now she's written this true crime memoir as an adult. The second POV, the second element of the structure is the serial killer himself who has picked up this memoir and who is reading it. So we're alternating one chapter is a chapter from this true crime memoir and the other chapter is a POV perspective from the serial killer as he's working his way through his through this book. Uh, it is absolutely fantastic, super original in terms of its portrayal of the serial killer as well as their one surviving victim. So I highly recommend this one on audiobook and I have heard it is also fantastic in print. The fifth book that I read for the month of January is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. So this is of course a crime novel and it is a YA novel. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder follows Pip as she is completing this school project where she is investigating a murder-suicide that happened in her hometown five years earlier. Now she sort of knew the, the girlfriend and the boyfriend who were involved in this crime and she believes that the boyfriend is innocent because he always seems like such a nice person. Now as we're getting into this of course things are infinitely more complicated than they seem. This is one of the few crime books I've read where it is legitimately the crime I am most interested in. Often when I've read crime novels I'm more interested in like the character dynamics or the character relationships or maybe the grander theme that's being explored but maybe not necessarily the who done it element but in this book I legitimately didn't know who had done it. There were lots of moving parts in it and it definitely kept me guessing to the end. The only gripe I had with the novel is that the protagonist Pip is supposed to be 17 but to me she sounded way more like she was maybe 13 or 14 but that's really my only gripe with it. The next middle grade book I read was The Explorers by Catherine Rundle. So I was really nervous when the bookseller gave me this book because she described it as three no, four kids are in an aeroplane that crashes on an island. And the first thing I thought was, oh god, this is just like an updated or retelling of Lord of the Flies. And no, thankfully it is not. So the book is pretty much what it says on the package. It's about these four kids who land on a desert island. And of course, the entire time they're just trying to get off the island. There are heaps of little fun adventures along the way though, and they meet some very interesting characters. So I really enjoyed this book, particularly, I have to say I really enjoyed the first two thirds of it, though I have to say for me personally it sort of started to lag a bit towards the end and I just sort of wanted to rush and get it over with, but it is a highly acclaimed book and I am not the target audience. 
The seventh book I read for January is Anatomy by Dana Schwartz. So I believe this was a Reese Witherspoon pick, um, which surprised me because it's a YA novel. And the subtitle for the book is A Love Story, which is somewhat misleading until you actually read the book. So there is a romantic subplot in this novel, but the book is really about our main protagonist as she in 18th century Scotland is discovering the fact that she wants to be a doctor. Between the Scottish setting and a young woman who wants to be a doctor, it definitely has some Outlander vibes. However, what makes this book different is that it doesn't have JV in it. <laughs> No, what makes this book different is that it's really a coming of age story and there's a lot of really intense barriers that our protagonist has to come up against in order to in order for her to achieve her dream um i really actually enjoyed this book it was always very easy to pick up i was always very happy to read it the one thing i do have to say is do not read this book when you were eating it is some very graphic medical stuff happens in this book Number eight was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So I listened to this on audiobook and it was, the new, the production on this audiobook was insane. I think this would actually be the ideal book to read uh, where you're listening to it and also reading the book at the same time because the actual book is highly stylized and it has a lot of graphic design in it because the book is told through reports and intercepted messages between two different spaceships. But if you don't like sci-fi, still consider reading this book because one, the structure is incredibly interesting and two, it's basically 10 things I hate about you but in space. So in a very quick summary, the book begins with two teenagers who break up on the day that essentially the world ends. So their colony is being attacked and they both leave on two different spaceships. And as the novel goes on, they manage to figure out a way to start talking to each other and figuring out what's happening on your spaceship, what's happening on your spaceship, as they try to piece together who attacked them and why. The ninth book I read is Our Chemical Hearts, which is also by Crystal Sutherland. So something I didn't mention before is House of Hollow is Crystal Sutherland's third book. And because I loved it so much, I wanted to go and read her two earlier books. But what really surprised me is House of Hollow is firmly horror, fantasy, lots of fairy tale elements, very, very not of this world. So I was very surprised when I read Chemical Hearts and it is like a straight up contemporary novel. Uh, I really enjoyed this book, but it is absolutely stuffed with teen angst. Thankfully, it's really balanced with a lot of comedy, a lot of humor. There are some really great pop cultural references. And one of my favorite highlights in the book is the constant reference to Fight Club <laughs> throughout the whole book. Oh God, it even just makes me laugh thinking about it. Now, Our Chemical Hearts was turned into a movie a few years ago. Don't recommend the movie. They pretty much cut out all the good stuff and then just focused on the teen romance. Whereas the book, I actually do recommend. It is very heartbreaking, but then I think there is enough humor in there to sort of carry you through. So it just kind of depends what you want when you read YA fiction. The 10th book I read for January is The Apothecary by Miley Malloy. Now I've read Miley's adult fiction, uh, particularly her short stories are fantastic. She has one um, published on the New Yorker called The Proxy, which I'll link below. Absolutely fantastic adult writer. So I had really high expectations for this middle grade book. And I feel, I feel bad saying this because she is a fantastic writer and there's some really good stuff in here. Um, there are some scenes that literally made me laugh out loud. There's lots of magic and whimsy. But I think, again, it was set during the Cold War and that's just, I don't know, just don't really like those settings, I guess. But to give a brief summary of the book, it's about three teenagers who suspect they have witnessed an exchange between two spies and they want to figure out if what they witnessed is true. Now, the apothecary comes into it because one of the characters, their father, runs an apothecary 
and they start taking little potions and spells from there and they do magical things like transform them into birds and do some other things that I won't say which would be totally spoilery but I enjoyed the book enough um, but again towards the end it started to drag a little bit uh, so that's probably the only thing I have to say with some of the middle grade books that I read they often, which is funny because you think middle grade is supposed to be very attention grabbing considering the audience they're written for, but when I was reading middle grade I would often struggle to maintain my attention the whole time. So the 11th book I read for January is The Night Gardener. So this is definitely my favorite middle grade book for the entire month and the reason is purely because of content. So the book is essentially like a haunted house book. So the house is pressed up against this creepy looking tree whose branches and roots are all consumed and twisted amongst the house. And we're following a brother and sister who have come to the house and they're trying to get a job there as a maid and as a groundsman. And the family are a little bit odd, surprising. So they actually do get this job here and as time goes on we realize of course that the family is getting really rather sick and that this tree is more than just a tree. It is actually being protected by a spirit who knows what you want and by giving you your gifts it convinces you to stay near so that it can slowly drain your soul. So the reason why I love this novel so much is just because of the creepy factor. It was definitely feeding into all of the spoopy vibes that I like around Halloween time. It would actually be a really great book to read around Halloween. And it has some very strong Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury vibes to it. So if you like those kinds of books, this one could definitely be a winner for you. So I definitely realized that with middle grade fiction, I have to read a book that deals with topics or genres that I'm already naturally interested in. The 12th book that I read for January is A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares, which is also by Crystal Sutherland. So now I can say I have read every book that Crystal Sutherland has written. So this was a very quirky book. It was interesting. So Crystal's first book, uh, Our Chemical Hearts, Contemporary YA, her second book, A Semi-Definitive List, is a stepping stone. You can see how she's trying to transition into fantasy which her, with her third book, House Apollo. So her middle book, A Semi-Definitive List, it's set in our real world, but it's very quirky because our main protagonist dresses up in costumes every day. Everything from Wednesday Addams to Amelia Earhart. And she is terrified of everything because she is convinced that her family has a curse on them and whatever they most fear will kill them. Now the thing is our main protagonist doesn't actually know what she is most scared of so she's curated this list of creepy things that most people typically have phobias about and throughout the course of the book she is essentially testing which things she is scared of and there's a, a lot of ambiguity in this book about whether or not the curse is real or whether or not it is the result of basically trauma and mental illness. So it's handled really well. I quite enjoyed it. So there you have it. Those are my 12 books that I read during January. Now something I definitely noticed with the middle grade fiction is that whenever there was introspection, it was always kept to about a sentence. We definitely do not have lengthy passages of the character reminiscing or thinking about why they are the way they are which of course makes sense because our protagonists are children and instead the story is propelling forward all the time we're always going on the next adventure the plot is always moving forward from a writing perspective it was often impressive to see how a writer was able to keep a story moving forward but that isn't to say that the writing was basic Sometimes, because you can see here, The Explorers, which was a book I didn't particularly like, but there were so many beautiful one-liners, which actually surprised me to see so much poetic prose 
in what is a middle grade book. So, and see the war that saved my life, same thing. With middle grade books, I, of course, I noticed that the sentences generally had really simple structures. So simple sentences and compound sentences. I didn't ever really come across complex sentences or compound complex sentences. So definitely a lot simpler in that regard. One of the things I've found during this month of reading middle grade and YA is that both these categories work fantastic in audiobook. And that's because the writing is largely really straightforward and direct, um, which is something that actually was quite surprising in reading all of these books. Like, yes, sometimes there's some insinuation in YA fiction, but often it is really straightforward, which makes following it on audio incredibly easy. Now, I don't want to say that these stories are simple stories. It's just that they're simpler than literary fiction, which requires a lot more attention. And if you were to drift off, you could very easily miss something that could be really vital to the plot and to the character transformation. Now that we've crossed over into February, I have started reading adult fiction again. And the main thing that I noticed is immediately it felt a lot more comfortable, um, which was quite interesting. I think because obviously in adult fiction, there's a lot more subtext. There's a lot more happening between the sentences, a lot that goes unsaid, but that is insinuated. So I think in that way, it's a little bit more stimulating and engaging for me because you have to work a little bit harder. At least um, the books that I tend to read, obviously if I was to pick up a contemporary commercial airport book, then that style is going to be a lot more clear and direct. But I tend to like things that are maybe a, at least a little bit more sophisticated. Like, don't get me wrong, I like straight up genre fiction but I don't sort of like popcorn thrillers. But things that I've noticed is immediately much more complex sentences where I had to pay a lot more attention. I couldn't just sort of like breeze over the sentences. There was no skim reading, which is definitely something that happened from time to time, particularly when reading middle grade and the language is so simple, you can just like gloss over the sentences and keep moving forward. Um, and the other thing I've noticed is just that chapters tend to be longer. Those are the two more maybe surprising things beyond the obvious of like characters' lives are just more complex. Um, there's a lot more layers and subplots happening within the piece. So something I do have to say from this experiment is I have never, never read 12 books in a single month. So if you ever want to just ramp up your book numbers for the year, this could be one way to do it if that is something you value. Though, of course, I have thoughts about that. I think we should read books because we want to read them and we get stuff out of them rather than just chewing through them for the sake of having a really high number by the end of the year. However, if that is something that's important to you, this is one way that you could really crank those numbers up. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I know it's been a bit of a break between November when I finished filming and coming back now in February. And I also know that this is not a writing vlog, it's a reading vlog. So hopefully that was still enjoyable. If you have read any of these books or if you have your own recommendations for great middle grade or YA that you'd like to pass on, please leave them in a comment below because I'd love to hear all about it. Now, if you'd like even more writing advice, you can, of course, check out the other videos on this channel or you can go to tarieast.com and dive into the archives. While you're there, please consider joining my email newsletter. When you do, you'll get an email in your inbox every single Thursday morning, including a note by me, a link to that week's blog and video, as well as some resources that I've recently loved and think you will too, and some other tidbits that I only share via email. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay safe, stay calm, and keep writing because the world actually does need more books, including middle grade and YA.